New Balance sales were up 23% in 2023. This guy got delivered some Air Jordan 4 bread reimagines with this factory floor and decided to list them for 17k. And Adidas Yeezys are back next month. We're going to talk about all of these sneaker news stories and lots more in today's episode. Let's start things off by recapping some of this week's biggest sneaker releases. I think one of the biggest ones had to have been the Supreme and Nike collab on the Air Max DN. For those of you out there that don't know, the Air Max DN stands for D's. No, 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 I'm only joking. I'm only joking. This is supposed to be the next brand new Air Max that was set to debut on Air Max Day next month, but we got the Supreme collab and it's safe to say these were really popular. They sold out really quickly online. These are currently reselling on StockX for right around £300, showing a level of demand there for sure. But I'm not sure once this sneaker does actually debut that it will really go on to be that popular. We also had the wider release of the New Balance 2002 uh, Jound collab there was an olive colorway and a charcoal colorway. Now I actually went for these on the New Balance website. I was there, I was waiting, I was all queued up, ready to seize on the drop. But then when the countdown hit zero, they refreshed it for like a whole nother week. And this has happened to me before on the New Balance website. Let me know if this has happened to you. Apparently they did go live sometime later, but this was another sneaker I missed out on. And we also had the ASICS and CP company collab in this gray colorway and in this yellow colorway. This was predominantly a raffle release, although this morning there were still pairs of the yellow pair sitting on the Kith website here in the EU UK region. Let's start off the news by talking about one of the biggest releases so far this year, the Bread 4 Reimagines. Over the past week people have been getting their pairs in hand and some people have not been getting their pairs in hand. As a lot of retailers, it seems, have completely oversold on the release. Finish Line, JD Sports, even the Nike sneakers app seem to have oversold on this product, leaving a lot of people really disappointed. And the disappointment hasn't been limited to people not receiving their pairs. Some people haven't even been impressed with the leather finish. My boy here, Vintage Heat from TikTok and IG, went ahead and took a little bit of acetone to his tumbled leather and gave us this slightly more matted out finish, more commensurate with the OG finish. He also made an interesting remark suggesting that the tumbled leather was actually fake and that you could rub off the pebbling with the acetone, which I thought was quite interesting. And then we have the resale prices. A week later, these are currently reselling in my size, a US 10.5 for around 250 pounds, around 270 bucks, which if you're selling on StockX after fees is netting you a pretty sumptuous profit of around nine or 10 pounds. And finally, we have this guy who got his pair delivered to him with an interesting factory floor. Well, it's actually not that interesting. As you can see here, the tongue label on one of the shoes has been stitched on upside down. And whilst normal people out there might look at this as a horrendous quality control issue, sneakerheads know that these types of factory floors actually make the sneaker way more unique and as a result, way more valuable. I actually made a video not even that long ago talking about the most expensive factory floors that have occurred on Air Jordans. And this person must have seen that video because they've gone ahead and listed these on eBay for 17K. Now 17K is ridiculous. There's no way Buddy is gonna be getting that. In fact, I even think 7K is probably way too much. I feel like a more reasonable price that you could actually get for this pair might be maybe three or 4K, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less. Let me know where you would value these at down below. Let's talk about New Balance. Last year was an incredible year for New Balance. They reported, get this, $6.5 billion in annual sales. That is a 23% increase on sales for 2022. And it's not just shoes, they surpassed $1 billion in revenue for apparel. They have over 350 athletes and entertainment ambassadors currently contracted. And apparently 63% of their customers from last year were new customers. They also reported over 35% growth in Europe and over 20% sales growth in the US. And they've been maintaining that number at a steady clip for the last three years now. And since 2020, sales have basically doubled in every region. And this is completely unsurprising to, I'm sure, all of us. New Balance have been killing it. Models like the 550, the 2002R, and more recent times, the 1906Rs have been hugely popular. They've been impressively successful with their collaborations. 
There's been an absolute breath of fresh air in a stale Nike saturated sneakerhead market for a number of years now. And all I can say to them is congratulations and well done. Right, let's talk about Yeezys. Apparently next month, we're gonna be seeing the final rollout of the remaining Yeezys. This drop, the third in the post Ye era was supposed to go down back in November, but Adidas put a halt on them because of the geopolitical tensions in the Middle East. March is set to see the launch of at least seven Seven different Yeezy models. And the seven thus far confirmed are these. Yeezy Slide Dark Onyx, the Yeezy 500 Stone Salt, the Yeezy Slide Salt, Yeezy Foam Runner MX Granite, the Yeezy 500 Stone Tolpe, the Yeezy Foam Runner Carbon, and the Yeezy Slide Slate Gray. These colorways are slated to drop throughout March, with additional pairs likely to be added to the release roster. Now, even though there's been a lot of controversy around Ye, it does still seem like there is a lot of demand still for these Adidas Yeezy products. So the question is, are you guys looking to pick some of these Yeezy releases up when they drop next month or not? Feel free to let me know. Right, so let's talk about some new sneakers that we saw this week. I want to start off with these, the Salehi Banbury Polex Mule. These are being called the Sarus. And the design language is quintessentially Banbury. At this point, you have the Crocs upper and then you have the fingerprint outsole unit. And unlike the Polex clog, this new mule silhouette shifts away from the rubberized elements, opting for a sleeker foam-based construction instead. We saw some on-foot picks this week of the Nike Kobe 8 Mamba Sita, which are set to release on Gigi Bryant's 18th birthday. And that is the 1st of May. These are set to be 190 bucks. And this release is expected to be part of this ongoing Halo collection, which started with the all white stuff you guys might remember, featuring this really nice butterfly graphic, which is a moving tribute. And then you've also got the golden detailing on the swoosh, as well as the Kobe branding on the tongue. Really nice shoe. I definitely prefer these to the recent Kobe 8s that came out, although they'll be almost impossible to get. What do you guys think? We've seen another colorway of the 1906R loafer in this really bright, exciting green colorway. Now you guys might remember we saw a black version of this loafer back in January. These are a collaboration between New Balance and Junior Watanabe. I'm not gonna lie, I actually really like these. I feel like this coming together of casual sportswear shoe and then trendy, dressy, preppy type fashion was an inevitability. And this shoe definitely pulls it off. The Nike Field General 82 releases on February the 29th. We first saw the Field General pop up a few weeks ago in a collaboration with Union. And apparently the whole idea behind resurrecting the Field General is to try to rival or maybe piggyback on the success of the Adidas Samba. And in these pictures here, you can see the similarities. It's a very basic, flat, low top sneaker, very retro, very vintage, very easy to style. And I think these could definitely be popular just so long as they come in at a really low price point, which is one of the selling points of the Samba. We've also had word that we are gonna be getting one of the best, if not the best, Jordan 9 colorways of all time, the original olive. These are supposedly dropping on October the 25th. I do think the Jordan 9 is one of the more regularly disrespected Jordans. But all that aside, I do think this colorway is probably the best. Let me know if you disagree. We've had a first look at the New Balance 1000 for 2024. And New Balance have resurrected more than a few Y2K era metallic running shoes. In fact, you could probably credit them with sparking this whole trend off, to be fair. And this particular silhouette here is no exception. These have been dug out of the archives and go all the way back to 1999. This colorway features a wavy white leather overlay and then some royal blue teal pink accents producing an aqua look that looks pretty much bang on with the whole 90s aesthetic. No official drop details have been confirmed yet, but I think these look really nice, really cool, and would be ripe for a big time collab. Adidas are producing some reggae inspired sambas, and the timing is bang on, considering we just saw the release of the reggae icon Bob Marley's biopic, One Love. And this makes a whole heap of sense. Bob Marley was a big fan of football and could often be seen where wearing Adidas football type sneakers. And so it's probably safe to say that he would no doubt rate both of these colorways. These are actually out there available right now if you guys wanted to go and cop these. I think these are pretty dope. Pictures have emerged this week showing us what might have been with the Travis Scott Mac attack. 
According to these samples, you can see here, the Makatech still looks very much like the OG, but some of the panels have been darkened out, including this mid panel, as well as the heel cup and also the swoosh. And so the question is, and it's an obvious one, would you rather have had these, these sample ones, or are you happy with the fact that we got the Mac attack in the way that we did? Personally, I think the no brainer would have been to go with these. These samples are way better. They definitely pay homage and show inspiration from the original colorway, but they differ up just enough to make it a completely distinctive sneaker in and of its own right, which I thought was the whole point of a collaboration. Right, we've got some updates and some official information of one of the most exciting sneakers of the year, the Air Jordan 4 Military Blue. The latest updates see us get a firm release date, April the 27th, as well as information that these are gonna be coming out in a full family size run, including grade school and I'm assuming as well toddlers. And if you are somewhat new to the shoe and wondering why this shoe is being so hyped up, the reason is very simple. The shoe has only retroed a couple of times before. First time these retroed back in 2006, no one cared about these. Second release in 2012, no one really cared about these. And those releases were both notorious for not only the bad quality that they had, but also the fact that they deviated from the original in the sense that they didn't have the Nike Air branding on the heel tab. And this upcoming retro is not only gonna see the sneaker come out with the updated tooling reminiscent of the SB Pine Green 4 with the rubber on the heel tab as well as the wings, but they're also gonna feature this updated old school shape a lot closer to the original and of course the Nike Air branding on the back. And so for collectors and newer sneakerheads, this is one of the most hotly anticipated releases of the year. We spoke earlier about the Supreme Nike D's Nuts and this week we also saw Cortez owner Clint419 share a silver bullet colorway online and this colorway has gotten a few people out there pretty excited. Some people thought that this image could correspond to a second colorway releasing alongside the black pair but other people have speculated that this is a friends and family pair but as nice as these are and as copable as they are I still don't think that the Air Max DN is going to be the hits that Nike are banking on it to be. Right let's finish up today by talking about some of the sneakers that you might want to keep an eye out for this upcoming week. On the 26th you have the Reebok preseason in this low cut colorway as well as this mid cut colorway. February the 28th you have the Air Jordan 5 in this lucky green colorway and then on the 29th you have the Field General that we spoke about before as well as the Foam Posit 1 eggplant. And here in the UK next Thursday we have the Nike SB Dunk Lows in this coconut milk colorway as well as this burgundy crush colorway as well as a whole series of SB apparel. Apart from that it is a pretty dry week. And that is it for this week's sneaker wrap. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch the video. Do me a favor and hit the like button before you bounce and go ahead and have yourselves a lovely day. I'll see you on the next one. Take care for now and peace.